Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea Tranquility, because it's Wednesday. You have arrived. New review day here on the channel. I've got a co-captain for this one, because I think it, it makes sense to have two people giving their opinions on this album. Welcome, Rick Labonte. What's going on, my friend? Very a lot is going on, but I'm glad to see you. It's been a while, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to talk to this record. It uh, it brings a lot of discussion about what what they did. Yes, so the band is Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, the album is called Ghost Stories on Frontiers Records. So, of course, if we go back a couple of years, Blue Oyster Cult had this wonderful comeback album called The Symbol Remains, which was our album of the year here on yeah. SOT as voted by you, the viewers, uh, in, what was that, Rick, 2001? 2020. 2020, Jesus. Yes. Man. Time is flying by. There we go. Uh, a great album. Right. One of the great comebacks of the last 20, 30 years. Yes. And just so good to have them back making new music again. And then, you know, all of a sudden we heard that they had another album ready to go. Although, sadly, this is not an album of all new material. This is basically an album of leftovers and rarities and things like that uh, that have been put together by the band. I don't know, Rick, I'm kind of hearing that this might be it for them. Right, that's well, kind of... that's what people have been saying, but I just recently watched Buck interview and he said, This is our last obligation, like anything what we were asked to do, we've fulfilled it, but doesn't mean it's the last thing we're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, he just yeah. said, it, It's almost like, um, you know, this whole album, this album reminds me of two type of uh albums out there, uh, that the way they put this together, like. Jimmy Page put Coda together because he had some leftover track from 78 and it kind of wanted to wrap up and they led up and put some bonus track or he had to seek out some live material, make it unlive just to make it to be like a studio track and just kind of wrap up whatever Led Zeppelin had left over, even though he could have put, hey, hey, what can I do on that? I was always wish he did. But anyway, he solved that problem with the, the DVDs, uh, I mean, CDs later on. But what this is also reminds me of what recently happened with the Beatles was that they used AI technology to help demix uh, an, a, a song that's already mixed and it may be an old recording or needs an improvement. But in order to remix it and improve it, they had to have individual track and they couldn't do that. Some of these songs are already a finished product and it wasn't up to par. So they used the AI technology that Peter Jackson used in the Get Back film and the Now and Zen song, which are able to um, separate the thing. But their AI software isn't like Peter Jackson's mouth. No, no, no. So they had to do whatever the AI could pick up a lot of stuff. But with all the layers of material, there's some frequency just doesn't get captured so they would have to doctor and add that piano bit that might have been missing from three quarters of the song or they do some vocal touch up but a lot of the stuff is the original uh sound that they got it's just they had an opportunity to mix it again and bring some people from the past just like now and then uh <laughs> use the song that was already in the past but brought people for the present to make the song work today and just like Jimmy Page did in Coda, he did some treatment to the song, added some electronic stuff to John Bottom's uh, Banjo Montrose, or had a, a totally different solo that he put on for We're Gonna Groove. This band did the same thing. If there's something lacking, could these songs, a song that didn't get on the, rock, the record that they were putting out, maybe they weren't strong enough, or weren't they had too many songs, or very rarely the BOC don't utilize what they they record yeah, so sure. they get kind of rare and it's a treat now is this a must to have for every person you want to hear no but this is a diehard thing for any fan like if you're a fan or a completist like you and i we have to get it am i disappointed in getting a record no but it doesn't stand near the shadow of their last album 2020. i mean that was if you're gonna go out in style and not your last album you know symbol remains is the best way to go it checked all the boxes. This doesn't do this because we learned, as you and I did more homework on this, I think it's coming from 78 to 83 and one song from 2016. So they're bringing back to life, but these songs are somewhat dated, right? And I can't help when, when I listen to this, it does feel like a compilation album still because the songs are, you can hear 78, you can hear 83, you can hear some of the time period. Don't you agree? 
Yeah, I mean, to me, they come, I mean, these are basically demos. These are basically yes. unfinished demos spanning those years. Uh, what's really interesting too, uh, and I believe, you know, you mentioned the whole utilizing AI technology. I think Richie Castellanos, um, who of course has been in the band now for a number of years, guitarist, keyboard player, writer, vocalist, uh, he had a lot to do yes. with helping putting the finishing touches on this. So we've got on the album, we got Richie, we got uh, Rick Downey on drums, uh, Buck as well on guitars and vocals. We got Alan Lanier shows up on here on guitars and keyboards, Joe Bouchard, bass, guitar, keyboards, vocals, Albert Bouchard, drums and vocals, Eric Bloom, guitars and vocals. So and you got Chasm Sultans on here and, you know, all sorts of other people. Uh, Jules Rodino also appears on here. So there's a lot of people involved. What's really interesting, though, if you look through from track to track, so many of these songs, especially the original songs, were written by one of the two Bouchard brothers. So their stamp is so much on this album and even the vocals. I think there's more Bouchard vocals on here than there are from Buck or from Eric, which is True. interesting. Um, but you have in total, how many tracks are on here? 12, 12. songs. You have a few covers um, for me personally. So I, before I even heard a note from this, I heard one of the songs that they pre-released, but I read a whole bunch of, reviews from people because you, you can't escape it anymore right people posting all over social media Very true. and uh you know a lot of people were kind of like oh my god how terrible this is what a letdown this is and i was like all right i'm gonna judge for myself because that's you can only be true by doing that right you can't just true. read what everybody else says so uh on my first listen i was thinking to myself all right yeah after the symbol remains i can see why people would say this is a letdown but this is not supposed to be a sequel to Symbol Remains. This is basically, right. this is an Very odds important. and sods collection. That's what Very it is. Important. That's what it is. It's like, let's go into the vaults and find anything we can get to release, to give people everything that's out there. Uh, you know, and unfortunately, a good chunk of this is pretty forgettable. But there are a couple, I think, of songs that I think are are noteworthy. Yes, um, everybody. You know, now for people who are familiar with their live albums, and they've got a lot of them, mm -hmm. it's studio versions of We Gotta Get Out of This Place and um, Kick Out the Jams. Come from it's, the Some Enchanted Night or Evening, Some evening, Enchanted right? Evening. Those are kind of cool, right? Because yes. they're great songs anyway. It's not like we haven't heard the band play them before, but here you got these kind of like demo studio versions of them. That's kind of cool. Not too bad. And they're a good version. I might even add better than that live cut take of some of these. You can and easily say that. We're pretty good. Yeah, you could easily say that. Uh, there's some kind of weird poppy stuff on here that I'm like, eh, I'm not sure I like. Like, Late Night Street Fight is okay. Cherry is okay. I think So Supernatural is pretty cool. I like Did that. Did you see the video, by the way? No, is it okay? Oh, yeah. just because I mentioned that Beatle thing about now and then when you see the video that have all these Easter eggs of the well, they did the same thing. And you mentioned Richie, he is the Swiss Army knife, he can video edit, he can play keyboard, yeah. he's an amazing addition to the band, and he's very faithful. You can tell he cares about the body of work of the past right to the present, so he's the, the perfect candidate and the perfect bandmate to carry the torch for him. Um, but he did a great job with those Easter eggs. Go watch the Soul Supernatural uh, one. Uh, there's all these things that you see from every album almost that as a fan like you and I, we will pick that up. Um, but you're right. There are some good songs, and there's some songs you can tell why it didn't make it in their previous records. Yeah. Um, but I think they enhanced it. I bet it's better than the version they originally had. I think. Oh, Richie, I don't doubt that for a second. Yeah, I don't doubt that for a moment that they added some drum triggers that is a modern sample because some of the sound might have sounded like a cardboard box. So they added some today technology so it's a mixed bag with digital and analog working together here yeah. but uh if anybody was gonna pull it off richie could and because that's the who he is and so i think he would be faithful to try to, to capture the very best that they have but like you said some of these songs like let's talk about that late night street fight it sounds like a decent record but is that the greatest opener they could come up with mm -hmm. i would argue maybe don't 
come running to me would have been a great way to open the record, perhaps. I don't know. But if you can tell that one sounds like 83. I'm not sure, but it sounds well, yeah, good. there's there's some it's, you know, mirrors the revolution by night. That you can you hear some of the poppiness of those two albums. That's a great example. Albums. Like and there's like Soul Jive, personally I think is pretty terrible. But Gun is a really good song. I, I actually like Gun quite a bit. I think that might even be my favorite song on the album. It's got a good vocal. Um, who wrote that one? So, uh, yeah, Joe Bouchard. Eric sang that one, I believe. Um, oh, no, yeah, no, not Oh, Jim, poor Jim. Oh, that's a song all about Jim. It's so funny because I remember like when I first heard it, I'm listening, I see the title, and then the whole song is about this guy, Jim. And I'm like, why is it called Gun? You know, why couldn't they call it like the Ballad of Jim or something like that? Whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Money Machine is pretty good. I like Money Machine. Um, you mentioned Don't Come Running to Me. I think that's, I like that. That's pretty good. I don't like the Beatles cover for If I Fell. It, I have a not, hard time listening to anybody do a Beatles if you can't outperform them. And it's the and last song. One of those examples. <laughs> it's the last song. I'm like, oh, man. It's like, God, you can't go out with that. It's just, yeah, nobody should be covering that. I mean, I guess part of me says, well, give them credit for attempting it. And it's not like it's just, I don't want to say it's not that it's not terrible. It's not good. Um, yeah, it's, it, vocals it, it, sound fine, but it's just like, yeah, you're right. You know, you really got to have a lot of balls to cover the Beatles, right? That's right. You got, Especially I mean, it's one thing, like there's a very few bands that actually do a better version of some Beatles song. It might be because they're so close, like maybe come together, Aerosmith is pretty damn good. But for the most part, most people don't do it. And they're not, I mean, they're a vocal band, but they're not famous for having the you know, most gorgeous uh, harmony to all that. But that was an interesting attempt. But I think they put it on that record uh, because it would be too short. It'd be 40 minutes as it is. So I, I have an issue, like the Black Crow only put out 37 minutes with album, but I wish they could have gave us another song. Maybe they felt the need to throw one more in because the album would have been uh, 36 minutes or something like that, 37 minutes or whatever. I don't know. Maybe that was the part of the thinking because that track, I believe, is 2016. It's the only one that's not from 78 and 83. Yeah. So my, from my understanding. But, I mean, you know, Shot in the Dark started off with this loud, uh, you know, Vegas lounge kind of act in the beginning, and then they walk it up a little bit. But that song sounds like something I've heard BOC do before. I don't know. It's something about that chord. I heard Eric do something that shot in the dark. It's not Ozzy, folks. It's a totally different song. But, mm -hmm. um, and if, if that was out around 83, you can see why they didn't put it out because shot in the dark from Ozzy would have been out. Who knows? Yeah. I would be interested to learn what they did as far as what time period some of these songs came from because they didn't give you that info. No, they don't now, let's really talk, talk about, about the that. artwork, though. Well, off the bat, I like the title. Could ghost stories mean you got stuff from the past, right? That you, you know, that, you know, they raised from the dead and brought it back to life. That's why it's kind of cool called Ghost Stories. But I kind of wish they put the band in there, pictures of the band. At yeah, least everybody that's that. on the record. Yeah. Like, at that's... least Led Zeppelin and Coda, they did that. They showed the, the, uh, the, the band path. If this was a wrap-up, they could have did that. But they do have some awesome artwork here. It's very consistent to the ghost look. It looks kind of creepy, but, you know, it's B.O.C. style all the way. I really like what they did here. I think it's a good album cover. I just wish maybe photographs of the band showing you then and now would have been pretty cool um, to have him. But, hey, I'm not going to criticize. We didn't expect this. I mean, when I had that symbol remains, I thought, okay, that's it. They went out in style, and I was lucky to grab a live concert of that tour. But I thought that was it. It was a surprise to hear ghost stories coming out. So I check out some interviews by Joe, Buck, and Eric. And one thing they said is that um, it took them a while to get symbol remains. There's no way when the label was calling them, hey, put out another record, that they felt they had the time to do something so good to follow that album. But they gave them the blessing to say, hey, they have this engineer. I wish he'd know, I know his name. If you know his name, please share. But this sound engineer that they work with for years, record everything they do, rehearsals, whatever. And he's the guy that saved them by having this material say, hey, I got from 78 and 83 and Richie went and looked into it with the producer they grabbed everything because they didn't there wasn't very little left 
But Buck said one of the best thing about the record for him was the only thing that song because he said I forgot about that song. I really like that song, the vocal. To me, only thing is a nice song, but is it a BOC song? I would have thought it would be something Buck would put on a solo record or something. That's how it sounds. It's a little removed from BOC, but it is a good song. Are these songs are decent? To some degree, they are. I mean. But when you follow what we know and how hard rock they've been putting out the record, they get very tame comparing what we know of BOC. And I think that's why people felt like a slight letdown because their expectations are so high after that last monster album. But if you can just treat it that, hey guys, we got some leftover gem, and if you're a Blue Ocean Cult fan and you say you got it all, well, you don't until you got this record, then. It's something you would, I would encourage people to buy. But at the same token, if you're looking for an ultimate album, it isn't that. If you're looking at some uh, cool jams, there are some of that. Now, I like Soul Drive as far as an instrumental, I like the musical part of it. I just didn't feel like it was a Blue Ocean Culture. Um, so that's what makes this a uh, combination album for me. The covers and all those different songs are sort of, um, it's an interesting running order, but like you said, when you get to If I Fell, you kind of like, you guys couldn't, just should have just left it at 11 songs then maybe, yeah. maybe. Or at least say bonus track, have a space in between. To, it's not part of the album, but we threw one in there. I don't know, what do you think? Or not put it last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit I'm a big proponent of not finishing off an album with like kind of like a dud or uh, you or know a ballad a mellow point, right? You want to just kind of put something that like puts the stamp on an album. That just doesn't do it for me at all. Right, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean I I I like the title, I like the artwork, I think the vibe is cool. I, I don't think it really matches the music at all. Like one of the things uh like Martin and I were talking on a on a recent show we did, like Spectres right you listen to specters and you look at that artwork i mean there's this like kind of ominous feel to the artwork and then even though the album isn't all that heavy there's a creepy vibe going on throughout everything on that album which i think for me really works you know i would argue that this artwork and the title doesn't really match the songs other the music, than the fact yeah. that you know ghost you know these are almost like these ghostly specter tracks from the past that just have been unearthed from the vault like they come out like a, mm -hmm. you know they wisp they come whispering out from the the gates the grave. Of whatever and you know i don't know so maybe that's what they were thinking whatever I, I, you know i'm not going to read too much into it but i for me this is an odds and sods here we go here's some shit from the vaults it's all you're going to get uh, I only hope, and I think this is what a lot of people are saying, and we kind of felt this way with that Deep Purple Covers album that they did. I hope this is not the final record we get from Blue Orange to Cult, because after that, the greatness that was The Symbol Remains, this feels like, oh, you can't go out on this. No. It is what it is. I think if they come yeah. out with another studio album, you know, three, four years from now, or whatever it is, and at least that's pretty damn good, this will just be seen as what it is. This is a little odds and sods collection of rarities. You don't like it, you know, it doesn't really matter, but it's not like this is the final statement. So right that's on. why I'm hesitant to shit all over this right now because I still think that they're they're going to have something else up their sleeves. I can't imagine they wouldn't. They may dial down the touring at some point because I've, I've read interviews with Buck and Eric and they're like, you know, we do a lot of dates. We can't keep that up. But who's to say they can't go in the studio? Look what they did on that last one. They can't do another one like that? I'm sure they could. So I mean, They may. They may, buddy. I really feel from Buck saying... There's no, we're not saying no, we just, we just fulfilled our obligation. That's all. And it's, you write better when you don't have that pressure. I think that's part of why they went that way when they had the, hey, you guys got to put another record on. You go, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, uh, after fall on that masterpiece, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure to put up on that fast. Mind you, they had a few years, but they've been torn so steady. They haven't had a lot. I mean, they did a lot of shows in most recent years. They're slowing it down, like you said. So that means if they slow it down, they're going to have some time to write. And if they do that, that might be something you and I will see. But um, but if we um, if you were to rank it, I mean, uh, give it a rating, 
what would you give it? Because I know me and you gave it a five out of five for the last record, and oh, it was our year. pick of 2020. <laughs> I know you said said it too. Uh, what would you do for this one? Uh, well, you know, I want to be fair to it, but on the same token, uh, I don't want, I can't give it anything too high because there's really not that much on here that I think is really good. There's a couple tracks that I like. Uh, so most of it, I'm just kind of like, eh, it's all right. I'm, I'm going to give this two and a half out of five. That's right. It's right in the middle, right? It's, it's not awful. I don't know that I could say this is solid or really good. Like I said, I, out of the 12 tracks, you know, forget the covers, right? Because we know they're kind of fun, at That's least right. two of them. Yeah, there's maybe three other songs that I enjoy. The rest of it, I don't really give two craps about, unfortunately. But, you know, I'm a Blue Oyster Cult fan, so I had to have it. I'm intrigued. I'll listen maybe a couple more times and, uh, you know, whatever. Then it'll go on the shelf. But uh, I don't think for, for those folks who are watching who are not like, Blue, like, like Rick said, Blue Oyster Cult ultra fans completest if you're not one of those people i don't i don't recommend getting this i agree if you are a fan and you have to have everything and you're you're intrigued even even like the 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 lesser songs on all of their albums you still kind of like then i think you'll kind of dig this right that's that's mm -hmm. kind of where i'm at i'm glad i have it right I, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll listen to the stuff i like on here from time to time but you know is it a great or even really good bluish to cult album i don't think so i don't think it was meant to be though it's mm -hmm. just it is what it is, right? And that's why some of these songs did not see the light of day back then. Yeah. It wasn't like, I mean, there's a couple of strong songs here that might have slipped through the net, but they needed today's treatment to be uh, brought to life. I'm going to be a little more kinder than you. I would say three out of five because of the work that went in there. I do respect what Richie did. And these songs, are, I don't mind the song. It's just, again, some of it just didn't feel BOC to me. Like, uh, there was, like if another band did it and it's just somebody else say, hey, check out So Supernatural or uh, Guns or Shot in the Dark, I would give it a listen. But if you were telling me after, you know, Symbol, Symbol Remains, I mean, they don't hold not even close to that kind of potent of the writing that they were doing. And it was more of a band record. This is not a band record. It's individual. It's more like you said, uh, Joe uh, and uh, record and anything else. There's a lot more people out there singing in it. There ain't no tainted blunt on this album. Let me tell you. Yeah, that. that's it. You know, and and of course, if they were torn, they won't play a lot of these songs live. I mean, if they, any, if any, if any, if if they do, it might be "Don't Come Running to Me." By the way, I like that title. Don't come running me if you're having a problem. Don't, you know, I love that title. But um, I'm going to give it a three out of five for the the amount of work that did to preserve it. And I kind of respect that. And, uh, and, and just to salute to Richie being respectful for the past and present members. But I do like some of these songs. I'm not saying they're not. They're just not blowing me away. It isn't anything that, wow, they really did it this time. Like the last album, I was so proud of them. Here, I'm just like, okay, but I'm not, I like, want to give him a fist bump or nothing over it, you know? You know, Rick, you know what it would have made this a much better album for me? And I, I don't think I'm asking all that much. Give me one or two brand new songs that you guys just created over the last year. You can't right tell on. me that not one of these dudes has, a, I'll use Richie as an example, because he wrote wrote a lot of the last album. Yep. You can't tell me that Richie Castellano didn't doesn't have a stockpile of songs that he could have said, Buck, Eric, and everybody else, here's these two tracks that I've have in mind. Add your parts. We we don't even have to do it in person. We can do it via email and all this kind of shit. And let's give the folks, the fans, two brand new songs. Would that have been all that hard? Even one. Well, just to point that out, uh, Buck did mention he has a single of his own coming out, a solo song. He could have offered that to uh, the ghost story, but maybe it wouldn't fit the theme ghost story because these are songs from yeah, the and past. I get it. I get it. And maybe not, but I hear what you're saying. I mean, we we would want that. I mean, I get it. I understand what you're saying. And and also it make the album just a little bit longer, maybe more heavier. They needed a couple more heavy songs in there. Yeah. But anyway... Also, if you don't mind, I do a quick plug in. If you want to know all the albums uh, up to Symbol Remains, and you know, not this one, obviously. Martin Popoff had a book uh, talked about individual records, 
uh, and we recommend you get this. Uh, the three of our SOT cast are on here on the panel, myself, Jim Baki, and uh, Jamie Lazo. And so us being fans, we were able to pick his brain, share our feelings about individual album. But this is a little in depth, kind of like what we did today. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so for those watching, I, I, I would urge everybody to at least give this album a listen. Um, I think that's the only thing you can do, right? It's, yes. Don't don't just take our word for it, because like I said at the beginning, I read a lot of what other people were thinking before I even got a hold of this. I still wanted to hear it and have it for myself, and I'm glad that I have it. Um, it it I didn't have any high expectations, so for me, I'm not all that disappointed. I'm just kind of like I knew kind of what I was getting into here, and uh, it's okay as as a bunch of oddities. It's okay. There's some I like how you. Here. There's some a good amount of not so good stuff, but that's okay because uh, you know we'll see what. I happens. like how you said odds and sods, like the the who compilation. Exactly how I describe this now. That's what it is I'm going for that reminds me of that. I was saying coda. I was trying to find a word that wrapped it up, but that's the best terminology. And I want to thank you, Pete, for inviting me to, uh, and to share our thoughts on this because as a fan, and uh, you and I had the same rating from the last album. Um, just that I gave it a three out of five for the, the production work went behind it all, but it really wasn't about all the individual songs. It was more about the idea and the, and, and I respect the effort, but like you said, it would have been a cream of the crop to give me a couple of new ones that they've written and, you know, especially with their, the sound they have today on today's stage. That's what I love about the last album. It sounds like just how you're gonna hear them on stage. Nice and loud with modern gear and the band tighter than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not quite that, but hey, whatever. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube all together all the damn time please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as a post and please do hit the like button before you leave it's actually kind of cool that rick is on the show today because we can now uh give a little promo for what's coming up on sunday rick and i will be back together once again to rank our top 10 albums from the great british blues rock band savoy brown so I know a lot of people have been asking for this over the years because they've been asked for it for a long time. Kim, the late Kim, the late great Kim Simmons was one of the great guitar players uh, of that kind of late '60s, '70s uh, British blues rock boom, and uh, we're going to pay a little tribute to Savoy Brand. So we'll rank our top ten favorite albums coming up on Sunday, and then Rick will be back also next week. He's going to be part of the next uh, review crew once again. Yes, sure. Rick is on the appears on the review crew uh, fairly frequently, so that's coming up, and he'll be uh, talking about a couple of releases then, along with Jamie Laszlo and whoever else might be on that episode. I'm not sure. I think Karen Laprezios is going to be involved in that I one, mean, and David David Gallagher. And Davey Gallagher, yep. So, uh, so yes, that should be a good crew for that. So stay yeah, tuned good for people. that. That is a week from Saturday. So uh, till then, for Rick Labonte, I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow on the Monsters Den. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.